Okay, welcome back. Today we're gonna go, we're gonna dive into uh, binary trees a little bit more. And um, let's take a look at some of the functions that we've written. Uh, this was the constructor for the node with the left pointer and the right pointer. And here is pre-walk. Here's the solution to pre-walk. Now, um, I've, I, I think the one that's commented below is actually better because in this case, if the pointer is null, then simply return. If it's not null, then it goes on to print the uh, value of that node and then it will walk the left hand side and then it walks the right hand side. Okay, so that's pre-walk and I've done it similarly here but in this case uh, I'm actually doing, I'm using two if statements if the left is not z zero and if the right is not zero. Personally I like the the comments, the commented solution better. I just find it uh, cleaner. So understand that there is one extra recursive call in this one, but I don't mind. I like the code. It looks better. Okay. Um, here is post walk. And remember for these ones, uh, for the pre walk, the C out happens first, right? Then the recursive calls. In the post walk, the recursive calls happen first and then the C out. Which, and you can think of the C out as the processing of the node. So whatever it is that you're doing to it. Okay? Um, now, the, la the, the last one is in walk. And um, so in walk is. Uh, that's the one where it happens in the middle. And this one, by the way, obviously produces the correct order as well. So this one would be recursive call, print, and then recursive call on the right. OK? Here is my binary tree we went over last time. and. Uh, Let's let's analyze the the breadth first. And so you're gonna take each level at a time and you're going to print out or, or process each level. So the order for this is going to be four, two, six, so first the first level, then the next one, two, six, then the next one, one, three, five, seven. Now the way to accomplish this is using something called a, a queue. So a queue, Q-U-E-U-E, -U -E -U -E, I know that's weird spelling, um, but it's, it's essentially, you know, North Americans perhaps call this like a, a lineup. So when you're lining up for a movie theater, so if this is, the ticket counter, this is the front of the line, okay, and this is the back of the line, then what you do is you start with the you start with the root node, that's the four, okay? So you would first of all um, you put the 4 in to the queue. Okay? So as soon as you put it in, um, the queue is now not empty, so there's something in the queue. And then you would say, listen, before you take this number out of the queue, let's ask it, do you have any children? And of course it does. The children of 4 are 2 and 6. So what you would do is you would say, okay, let's put two and six. First you put the two in, then you put the six in, 
and now you can process the four. You can you can print it, whatever, and then you pop it out of the queue. Now let's go to the. There's actually a uh, a reference here in terms of what a queue is, and um, a queue a queue is a is a FIFO or a first in first out device. In other words, a container. I shouldn't say device. So, some of the methods associated that we're going to use is empty, and uh, it returns uh, empty returns a bool. Okay, I think that's pretty obvious. What what empty would do, right? True or false, depending on if there's anything in it. And then there's front, which returns a uh, a reference to the uh, the front item okay there's an example of that there and the other one we're gonna need is uh, push and pop so push puts things into the queue okay and um, and we're also gonna need pop which which takes out which is basically like taking out the guy at the front or the, the item at the front Okay, so if we now come here and say, okay, well, we've now pushed in two and six, and we knew to put two and six in because they were the children of four. Now we can process the four, let's print the four, and now let's take the four out. Okay, so what's left in the queue now is six and two, and let's do it all over again. So we ask two. Uh, do you have any children? And so, yes, two does. It's one and three. So we'll take those guys and push them back. So now we have uh, one goes in first. So we've got six, two, one, three. And now we'll print the two and we'll pop them out. And so we're left with uh, three, one, six. And we'll ask six, do you have any children? And um, he says, yes, I got five and seven. So the left and right children of those guys get put in. So that would be three, one, six. So five goes in first, second goes in next. And then we would process the six, we print it, and then, and then take it out. So now if we're left with seven, five, three, one. Now we ask one, do you have any children? And now at this point, uh, none of the rest of them have any children. So we're not gonna push anything back. But now we would just print it and then uh, pop it. So we're left with seven, five, three. And then at, does three have any children? No, so we can't put anything in. Then you print it and you pop it and we're left with seven five and if you keep doing that um, you'll get five and seven as the output so now if you'll see this is the correct output for our breadth first uh, search so if we take a look at the algorithm on how to do this uh, I've written it here so perhaps maybe what I should suggest is why don't you pause the video right now and try it yourself before you actually see the solution it's not that hard alright let's go through the solution so didn't I've done this a couple of different ways uh, the first way is I just say you know I create a, uh, a queue and what variable better to use than the letter Q uh, and then I make a node pointer N and I push root into the Q as I described before and um, while the Q is not empty I have to continue doing something so I'll put I'll grab the front guy okay so I'll go Q dot front and assign it to N which is a node pointer and then I will print out that 
nodes integer, and then I will call uh, push on the left child and push on the right child, provided that the left and right are not zero. And then after the after the children are in, then I pop out the um, the first guy, q dot pop, which is, takes out the front guy. Um, now the other way to go about this uh, is essentially to do the same thing, except now if q dot front is not null, okay, then so why would this why would this work differently? Well, in this case, you see, um, this this would actually uh, work for like for if left and right um, were null, then they'd get pushed in, but they'd be omitted from being. Um, printed, which is good, because we'll have a segmentation fault if that happens. But essentially, if, if the front guy is not null, then go ahead and process it. If it is, just take it out. OK? So that's a slightly different, slightly different, you know, uh, as opposed to here, I'm saying if the right and the left is not null. Is not null. OK. So, yeah, we didn't use new node function here. Instead, we used the uh, constructor function in the, in the struct. Here's insert. Insert's actually recursive as well. And um, we pass this by reference because if you want to, let's say, for example, if the um, the tree is empty and you want to put something in, well then it's going to become the root node. So you have to change the root address in, in the main calling function. And so therefore we're passing it by reference. Uh, now if, and that's what happens here, right? Um, also, right, this is also important because um, not just for that purpose, but also because you have to affect the the pointer which you made the call from previously so it's that's one of the reasons but that's not the only reason that has to be passed by reference so here if nd is equal to 0 okay so when does that happen not just when there's nothing in there but let's say, for example, if you're at the bottom and um, you want to put something in, then you would go nd equals new node c, and then return. Now, if you're not at if you're not at the bottom, then you would say is c, which is the integer, is it less than nd nd c? So, in other words, c is the what you're passing in here, right? You're passing in c. You're saying, is that integer less than the integer of the, uh, the node's integer? If it is, then insert left. Take that same integer and call insert on the left node. If it's not less than, OK, uh, then it must be greater than. Now, we're not going to consider equal to because we're not going to have um, well, actually, no. Let me think now. No, that's that. That's true. If it's equal to, then it will go to the right. So that's that's fine. Um, but we're calling insert on the right. So eventually, when we go down this binary tree, we're going to hit a point where the the base case where the pointer is equal to zero. And then in that case, we're gonna, that's when we're going to create the new node, and um, we're going to return. So it's, it's super important that we pass by reference, not just if it's empty, but also because uh, we wouldn't be actually changing the tree if it wasn't passed by reference. OK? 
Um, then finally, we're at uh, the binary tree free. And remember, this has to be post order. It must be. It's the only one of the, th uh, of the orders that will work for freeing all the memory correctly. And in this case, it's just if nd equals 0, return, uh, and then free the left, free the right, and then delete, and then set it equal to 0. OK? Here's yet another way that I wrote uh, the binary tree free. It's very similar to above. It's just a slight difference to it. OK? Um, instead of saying if nd equals 0, return, I say if nd is not 0, then go ahead and do your processing. So that's the end of, there's int main. That's the end of the, my example for the, the binary tree example. So I added a few extra lines to show um, which type of walk it was. And when I run this, uh, they all look good to me. Okay. Now let's do one last thing. Let's actually check if uh, there's any memory leaks here. So let's go, let's use valgrind here. OK, so we ran uh, valgrind vtree, executable, and we noticed that all heaps were freed, no leaks are possible. Yay, success. So that's our solution to the binary tree example.